In first year chemistry, we discuss bonding in terms of ionic solids, molecular solids, and metallic solids. And in fact, we do a lab where we investigate some of the properties of ionic solids versus molecular solids in terms of melting points and conductivity. So I want to review that so that we can expand upon the topic a little bit and talk about covalent network solids, alloys, and polymers in AP chemistry. So ionic solids are very stable. They have high melting points because they're held together by extremely strong electrostatic or coulombic attractive forces between the oppositely charged ions. So they form a very ordered lattice. But interestingly, we tend to have a misconception about ionic compounds. Tend to think that it's like Na and a Cl, and those two ions get together and make NaCl. But in reality, these are not directional interactions. One sodium isn't attracted to one chloride ion. In sodium chloride, in fact, the sodium ion can be attracted to six chlorides surrounding it, or vice versa. If you look at this image, which has the chloride ion there in the center, you can see that there is a sodium ion on each of the cardinal north, south, east, west directions, plus one above and one below, all of which are the near neighbors that are attracting that chloride. So there's not just one attraction here holding this lattice together. There's six attractions per each one of these ions. So if you think about that, hopefully it should make some sense that it should take a lot of energy to break up this lattice. I'm not just breaking apart one sodium chloride attraction. In order to get one sodium ion separated, I have to break the attraction to six chlorides. And each chloride I have to break apart from up to six sodiums. So if that takes a very large amount of energy to disrupt this lattice, that kind of explains why it has such a very high melting point. Conductivity testing is a big thing that's done if you have an unknown compound and you need to determine whether it's ionic. Remember, a current is moving charged particles. So as a solid, where the ions are fixed in place and cannot move other than just vibrating back and forth, that's an insulator. It will not conduct current because the ions can't move, the charged particles can't move. Well, that means that if I melt an ionic solid, or if I simply dissolve it, say put salt in water, then I've disrupted that lattice, I've made it a liquid so the ions can move, or I've put it into a solvent and dissociated it so the ions can now move. And so a solution of an ionic compound is conductive. And this is the sort of thing that shows up on multiple choice questions on the AP exam more often than you would think. Molecular solids are solids that are made up of individual molecules. So think sugar. Sugar is a solid made up of sucrose molecules. This means they're held together by intermolecular attractions, attractions between molecules, which are much weaker than ionic or covalent bonds between atoms. So between molecules is weaker than the bonds inside. The molecule. Molecular solids are therefore easier to disrupt, so they have lower melting points and tend to be softer, more brittle than ionic compounds. So if you think about it, you can melt sugar on a stove. You cannot melt sodium chloride on a stove. A molecular solid has a much lower melting point than most ionic solids. Molecular solids are made out of individual molecules, and that means there's no charged particles. It's not made out of ions. It's made out of C6H12O6s, 
neutral molecules. So if you think about this, if there are no charged particles, just neutral molecules, if I melt or dissolve a molecular solid, will I end up with something that's conductive? Well, no, because a current is moving charged particles. If there are no charged particles, it doesn't matter if I melt it or dissolve it, it can't conduct. There's no charged particles to have a current. The last kind of bonding we talked about in first year chemistry was metallic bonding. And whenever I do this, I do the little bad hula dance because the theory of metallic bonding is this idea of a mobile sea of delocalized valence electrons. So the valence electrons are able to move around all of these different ions. And since I can move electrons, which have a negative charge, metals are conductive. Since I can move and get moving electrons very quickly, that explains part of why metal is such a good thermal conductor. And since my bonds are not stuck in any one place, it's just a sea of electrons, just like I could flatten out a sea of water, I can flatten out a metal. So all of these interesting properties of metals can be explained by the fact that these elect valence electrons are delocalized, forming a sea of electrons around the core metal ions. So in terms of classifying our solids, we have ionic solids, high melting points, hard, brittle, insulators when solid and conductors when liquid or aqueous. We have molecular solids, which are softer, lower melting points that are not conductive, either when melted or aqueous. And we have metals, which are good conductors, have high melting points usually. And those are the ones that we have discussed in first year chemistry, ionics, moleculars, and metals. In AP, we are going to talk about covalent network solids, alloys, and polymers. So now that we've got our basic properties of those first three down, we're going to develop those second ones and expand some more on the reasons behind some of the different strengths of interactions that we see in ionic or molecular solids in class.